welcome to vlog 23 and it's time for the big plant out so i'm incredibly lucky that some friends of ours have this beautiful small holding um just near where we live and they have offered me some of their compost for free so they make this compost with their manure from their alpacas and their goats and myself and my daughter have been taking them up on their very kind offer and have been up a few times now to get some and take it to the allotment. At planting out time it's so helpful to have access to lots of compost especially when you're making new beds um, and it's kept us fit barrowing it up and down. Because I grow with the no-dig method having access to good living compost is really really important um, I do try and make as much as I can but it's never enough and I've been really thrilled um, to be able to have this and it's got so much life in it and I think it's going to make a huge difference to the crops that I'm growing this year I've used in my courgette planters and also to mulch my potatoes as they've come through um, the, this is now up to the top of the planter so I don't need to mulch them anymore I'm just going to let them grow through now and hopefully develop lots of potatoes So um, over the past couple of days I've been planting out loads and loads of little plants um, I've had a really busy time recently what with children's exams and I've been doing bits of work here and there so I kind of had a backlog of plants and also um, up here in the Pennines where I, where I garden um, it has a really short season so our last frost date can be as late as the end of May um, and our first frost date can be as early as the end of September so it's a really small window of time to play with um, so as soon as the plants can go out they need to go out but if you risk it and put them out too soon I'm playing with fire really so um anyway keep an eye on the weather forecast and it looks great right through to the end of may now so i think i'm safe um so yeah so i've been planting out all sorts of things i've planted out beetroots and leeks but i've also got out my um, mashua squash courgettes um i've finally sown some beans um, I'm going to direct sow some beans as well um, because I tend to find that I lose quite a lot of beans to slugs and things so it's worth over sowing and I can always pull them out if I do happen to get too many which is probably unlikely and um, yeah I don't know what else I've sown, I've sown planted, I've done loads um, chard, I've plant, planted out some chard I'm going to sow some more chard later on in the summer um, so we've got a bit of succession going on and then as gaps empty up towards winter I'll have some established plants to put out. Um, the other thing that I really need to get done is my brassica cage. So I'm sticking with my no dig method, so I'm putting down cardboard. I'm going to put two lines of compost down the side and a line across the back and then just some wood chip down the middle just so I can walk in and out without disturbing the soil too much. Um, and get my plants out because I've got lots of brassicas to plant out so yeah that's a job that desperately needs doing and another job that needs doing that I'm going to try and get done today is to plant out my tomatoes into the polytunnel so I'm planting those into some grow bags this year that I got sent um, and my plan was to do that today and I usually use string to tie them up to the frame but I forgot to bring my string so I might have a bit of a plan I might be able to do something a bit different we'll see um yeah and it's gorgeous and sunny May has gone from it feels like the very very beginning was like winter and then we've gone through spring and now we're in summer um within the space of two weeks which is bonkers but everything's growing fantastically quickly, including all the weeds. Um, and yeah, it's just beautiful. It's just the most perfect time of year. You know, everything looks gorgeous. The weather's beautiful um, and nothing's gone wrong yet. So 
it's great and I hope you're enjoying your gardens too. So I'm going to get on with it and I hope you enjoy watching me planting out and getting busy with the pot. So this bed is pretty much all planted up now. I just have a couple of spaces either side of the PR, the P um, tripods. I think I could call them tripods. Anyway, um, I've got my radish and parsnips that I sewed together. And as you can see, there are loads of radish come up, but the parsnips are super slow. There are a few. Look, there's one just here and there's a few others now that are growing but they are much slower than the radish so it's definitely a good plan to sow the radish with them make use of the space and remember what you've sown i've also planted out plenty of beetroot some of these are a little bit bigger than others and there's a dead nettle in there which i'm leaving in because the bees like it um and i've done some leeks so i've done this in stripes in rows i've got beetroot leek beetroot leeks um, and I'm going to sow some more beetroot next week so that I can have lots of beetroot all year basically. And I also have some carrots coming up here too. And then the pak choy at the end which bolted but is providing some food for the bees as well. And hopefully once it all gets established it will look really pretty in its rows. So this is an old laundry basket that I grew some courgettes in last year. This bed doesn't have the best soil and just nothing ever seems to grow very well in it no matter what I put down. So I decided to add a planter instead. So I'm using this old laundry basket and I'm putting in some of this amazing compost from my friend Small Holding. As you can see, it's full of worms, which is marvellous. Um, it's got manure in the bottom, so about three quarters full of manure um, and then this compost in the top. So it's really, really rich and I'm going to be planting two squash plants in here. There's a winter squash and a patty pan and hopefully they will grow up either side of this very makeshift archway. Um, it is a bit wobbly, as you can see, so I think I'll have to put in a few more supports. I'll probably put some um, kind of metal ground anchors in either side, because once the squash do grow up, hopefully, um, it can get really weighty and pull over. So it is tied to the fence at the back, but I might add some extra support just to be on the safe side. Um, if these don't do well and the slugs eat them, then I'll probably grow beans instead up this arch. Um, but we'll just hope for the best. I think I must have a cat coming on the allotment because something has made a little bed in this patch of primroses and chives. I haven't spotted whatever it is yet, but it's definitely been cosy. 
If you're sowing flowers from seeds, um, a lot of them respond really well to pinching out. So if you notice that yours are getting lots of little leaves either side of the stem, that's usually a sign that they will respond well to pinching out. And this is just literally taking off the top half of the plant at this point. Um, and I've done that to all of these snapdragons. And you just pinch off just above two leaves. Which will hopefully mean you get a much bushier plant and lots more flowers. So every year I like to grow something new and this year I'm growing some edible lupins. Now as I understand it, the plant itself isn't the edible part, um, but it will look pretty. The leaves are beautiful as you can see. Um, it will get really pretty but smallish lupin type flowers and then it will produce seed and it's the seed that you can eat. Um, so it's, it's something new, it's exciting to try it and I always like something that looks pretty as well as being functional. So I'm going to grow some of these along the bottom of my bean trellis in our little seating area. So hopefully it'll look really nice um, and it'll be interesting to try them at the end of the year. So I've been growing them in these root trainers. Um, I did start them off in a different um, shallower receptacle, a little tub can't think of the word um but yeah and then I moved them to these root trainers so they could get more established before I planted them out and that's worked really well and um, they seem to have really liked that and I'm hoping that they'll like it here it gets quite a lot of sun through the day um obviously it's a little bit shaded out by the other trellis um come the evening time but yeah it gets plenty of light so I think they'll be happy So I have started sowing some beans, um, I've sown them in some pots at home and I'm going to bring those to the allotment once they've got established, but I'm also planting some direct. Um, these are Blauhild, which are a purple French climbing sort of bean. I grew them last year and they grew really well, they were really prolific, so I'm hoping they'll do well this year too. And they have beautiful purple flowers as well. Um, which will be really nice in our little seating area. So fingers crossed these grow quick. A couple of years ago, I planted a courgette in the top of one of my compost bins or compost Daleks and it was 
just so happy in there. It grew really well and we had loads of courgettes and they were really good ones and the slugs didn't seem to bother it. So I figured that I would do the same again but do it four times and grow the squash in there. It will also hopefully have the added benefit of producing lots of compost. So I've filled these compost bins with about three quarters of horse manure, leaves, ferns, which are leaves, but you know, I have a lot of those, um, cardboard, weeds, all sorts. And then I'm putting about a bag or so of compost in the top of each one. So I'm putting some comfrey in this one as well because that rots down nice and quickly um, and it's, you know, it's full of potash and will really help my plants to grow. So I'm putting some more of my free compost into these and then I'm going to grow my squash in the top. And also in the top of each one, I've put something for the squash to climb up. So just a bit of old wire fencing, um, bits of trellis that I had. So hopefully the squash will climb up those and then flop over the side. So there'll be plenty of room for the squash to get nice and big without sprawling all over the floor. The only downside to this is when the squash do sprawl and trail along, they root where their stem touches the ground quite often and that is an additional source of food and water then for the plant so obviously that won't be happening with these but I'm hoping that because they're in a really rich growing medium in the compost bins as long as I keep on top of the watering fingers crossed they will grow really well so I was really pleased to see that the ones I planted yesterday are still here slugs haven't eaten them yet so yeah i'm quite excited for this i hope it does really well and it's um it's caused quite a stir among the other allotmenters they've all been asking what on earth i'm doing um but yeah i think hopefully they'll they'll think wow that's fantastic and then everybody will want to do it next year <laughs> My brassica cage um, is finally getting some attention. We put it up a month or so ago and I'm really pleased with it. But yeah, it, it just needs sorting now so I can plant out. So I've pulled down most of the comfrey plant that's in here and scattered it all over the floor so that can rot down. And then I've covered half of it with cardboard. I will be covering the other half as well. I just don't have enough cardboard on the allotment at the minute. So I figured if I just do one half, that would be better than none. Um, I also need more compost to cover the whole area. So I'm just gonna try and get one side done. Um, and then hopefully when I come back in next week, I'll be able to get the other side done. Um, with a bit more compost and a bit more wood chip. To stop the weeds from growing up, I'm just using the, the cardboard and then I'm wetting it so that it will rot down nice and easily and it won't form kind of a crust between the ground and the compost that I'm going to put on top. And then I'm just putting the compost straight onto that cardboard and I will plant straight into that compost. So it's really super quick and easy. Um, just, yeah, I can't even imagine gardening any other way now. <laughs> um, the idea of having to pull up all the weeds all the time would be a nightmare. Obviously, I do weed. Like, in established beds, I weed um, by just pulling out the weeds on a dry day when possible. Um, and I will dig out the occasional kind of dock or something that has a really deep tap root, but on the whole, it's cardboard all the way.
So, I'm um, going to plant my tomatoes into these peat-free tomato and veg planters. Um, they're from Rocket Grow and they sent me them to try, so um, I'm giving them a whirl. And it's got the markings to show that I can cut four holes into here to fit four tomatoes. Um, so, that's what I'm going to do. Um, I'm going to turn it over and just make some holes underneath for drainage with this excellent hurry hurry knife um, which is my go-to garden tool it's brilliant for all kinds of things so I'm just going to do that and then as I said at the beginning I forgot to bring the string with me but I do have this bit of baling twine so what I'm going to do normally I would wrap the string around the roots of the tomato and then when I plant it, I would then pull the string and tie it to the top. Now I do have some old strings from last year. So I think what I'm going to try and do, um, rather than use them, that I think are probably a bit decrepit now, I'm going to tie this baling twine around this way. And then when I remember to bring my string, I will tie the string to this, which will be weighted down by the grow bag and then my tomatoes can wind around those and hopefully that'll work we'll see so back in with here i'm gonna make a hole and i'm just gonna tuck that under there i think oh and this looks really it looks a bit like manure um it's not manure but it's it's like not like really well rotted compost. It's kind of still got a sort of straw like texture to it. I don't know if you can see how it pulls. Have a look. So tomatoes do like it really rich. So hopefully they will like that. Um, I'm not growing as many tomatoes this year. I'm just doing eight here in the polytunnel. And then I have a couple of outside ones at home, just to see how they do really. Okay. It says on the bag that it will feed three months. So I normally feed my tomatoes about once a week. Sometimes once every two weeks, if I'm honest, um, depending on whether I remember or not. And but I quite often just chuck some comfrey leaves around them, which gives them um, a bit of a feed. I'm just moving some of this down because I think when I've been carrying it, some of the stuff has gone to one end. Right, so here's my tomatoes. So I have got one that I bought from Lidl. Um, which just looks super healthy um, and this is a Saint Pierre which I haven't grown before it's looking like quite a big orange tomato um, so I'm just going to take off those like suckers that just grow from the side um, and I'm going to get this in here so if I was planting this down into the ground I would plant it really deep. Um, probably would take off those bottom three leaves and plant it right in, just to give it more chance to make plenty of roots. But obviously I'm going to go back, so you've only got a sort of certain amount of depth. Okay, and then I've got a marmand. Now this is another big tomato. 
and this is some seed that we saved on trip to Spain a few years ago so that'll be really nice to kind of remember that nice time and the sunshine and then we've got a Costoluto Fiorentino I don't know if I pronounce that right I've not grown this one before but it's um it's kind of a knobbly tomato another quite big one so this is going in next there we go and finally in this one we've got a tigerella which is a lovely stripy green tomato well green and orange usually okay there we go so nice and easy and then i'll tie my string to this piece of baling twine and as the tomatoes grow i'll just wind them around yeah so i'm just going to water them in Looking at the weather forecast, um, I think I'm going to be doing a lot of watering over the next couple of weeks. It looks like it's going to be sunny and dry and beautiful, so I'm not going to complain. I'm just going to love the weather and I'm just going to get down here as often as I can to water. Um, obviously, new seedlings get watered first, um, the things inside get watered, and then established plants like the fruit bushes and, and the perennials will cope pretty well without water for quite a while. So as long as they get a drink once a week in really dry weather, they'll be happy. Um, so yeah, but the, the little seedlings and the new, new transplants, they really need the water regularly. So I'll get down here as often as I possibly can.
So thank you so much for watching and I will obviously keep you updated as to how all my new little transplants do over the next few weeks. Take care and thanks so much for watching. Bye.